Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, I live full-time with my Forerunner, traveling around, taking landscape photos, making videos like this one. As you can tell, I'm not in the Forerunner right now. I'm actually in the Seattle area getting prepped to go to Alaska. More on that in a later video. For this video, though, I just wanted to talk about Instagram, and specifically in the last six months, just witnessing a decline of photography-related content on Instagram. But I don't necessarily think it's coming from content creators. I think it's them pushing different things, such as Reels, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. But I've never had the best relationship with Instagram. I've talked about it here at length, and it's never been a platform that's great for expressing photography in general. It kind of locks us into, well, at first square ratios, then they went four by five. So a lot of us found ourselves cropping images to the way we probably wouldn't want to crop them or even taking images a lot of the time just because they're going to do better on social media. And I've always had that fight in me of, I don't want to cater my content just because it gets, does better on some media platform. But the truth is what Instagram has done way better than any other platform. We're talking like 500 pics, Flickr, any photography platform is that it's gotten our work in front of the eyes of everyone. The problem with all those photography platforms is they're great for growing and learning and sharing your work with other photographers, but that doesn't get your work in front of other people. And that's where the beauty of Instagram has really come in is that it's a huge audience. It's absolutely massive. And it was never made for photographers. It was made for everyone and then just kind of mass itself as a photography program. And that's really where the beauties come in. It's helped people get clients. It's helped connect models for photo shoots. It's helped me find landscape photography locations. It's done a lot of things. And I think that that golden era is probably gone. Um, if you haven't been on there or haven't noticed or haven't paid attention, well, good for you. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, I wish I could just turn it all off and just focus on my work as well. But sometimes I feel this urge that I need to get my stuff out there. It's one of those things where you have to question Am I doing all this and no one's seeing it? Or is everyone seeing a bunch of stuff I'm not doing <laughs> and trying to balance that? But anyways, in this video, we're gonna talk about Reels specifically. And something you might know is that they're pushing Reels endlessly. I'm sure anyone watching this that has used Instagram in the past six months already knows this. But did you know that they're paying content creators, people like me, to make Reels? More on that right after this intro. All right, so like I said, you've probably noticed that Reels are everywhere all over Instagram. They used to just be located on their own tab, but then Instagram just started pushing them on everyone's feed in the last couple months. Now, you've probably been thinking that people are just making Reels because that's what Instagram is pushing. That means that that's what people are gonna see to grow your brand, but that's not it. Uh, they are actually paying people to make Reels, and they're offering this to content creators pretty randomly. Everyone that I've talked to, I've probably talked to 20 or 30 people and it's only been a select few people that have been offered this program. Now, when they offered it to me, of course I did it because I was like, well, this can't hurt and I wanna to try to see what it's all about and how the scaling works. So I'm gonna read some numbers off to you. When they offered me to do this, it's basically you get paid for the amount of views you get, kind of like just AdSense from YouTube, but on a more of a restrictive scale. So there's no exponential growth, there's a limit. So they offered to pay me $1,200 for 1.09 million views. And it seems like the $1,200 number is pretty normal and it just scales based off of the amount of views. Now this scaling and offer is also based on my audience and my following. So like if you had 100,000 or 200,000 followers, you're obviously gonna get offered the same amount of money for a lot more views. That just makes sense. The other thing is that the payout scales. So if you're a smaller content creator and you get less views, obviously because you have a smaller channel or a smaller following like I do, they pay out pretty well for a, honestly barely any views. For example, I got the first $200 with less than 20,000 views out of the one point, basically the 1 million views that I was supposed to get. I'm actually gonna put on the screen now all of the screenshots that I took uh, and it's just gonna progressively go up so you can get an idea of that pay scale. Um, what ended up happening though is I actually ended up getting lucky and one of the reels that I made ended up doing really well and it got 1.5 million views so I ended up getting paid out the max amount that month. The truth is I hate making reels. They feel so superficial and they don't really provide a lot of information or actual sustenance to the viewer. Sure, they can be beautiful or inspirational quotes or just really catchy things that people can distract themselves from their lives with. I understand the reasons there, but from a 
from a content standpoint. It feels as if the ones that I put more effort into, the, I made some reels that were tutorial based that were trying to show and edit in 30 seconds or quick tutorial things that actually provide information in a very quick and digestible manner. And those required a lot more effort. Uh, they did fine, like they didn't do poorly. They definitely got 10,000, 15,000 views sometimes. But it was the reels that <laughs> I barely put any effort into. It was just something beautiful that I matched with like a super catchy saying or an interesting song. And that was enough for it to just take off. So I started to notice that the more effort I put in, the worse they did. Or that there was no real correlation to the effort I put in to how well they did. And that was something I realized as I was learning of all the people that do reels really well is that consistency is all that matters. Uh, quantity is way more important than quality. And I honestly, I hate that. Uh, I think that that's just the general consensus behind social media in general, but I just hate following that method of post as much as you can and don't necessarily worry about the quality of the content as much. And I did this. So like I said, I hit that goal of a million views and I got paid $1,200 and it was awesome because it felt like, honestly, it felt like cheating. I don't, the one reel that did super well is just a clip of me in Utah. I'll just put it on the screen now to, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure a quote by Gandalf. Uh, that's it, that's, that's what took off. And the next month I also did some reels and I only hit $400. So way less views, but I didn't put as much effort in. And then the following month, they moved the goalpost. <laughs> what I mean by that is my thing went from you get paid $1,200 for a million views to you get paid $1,200 for 11 million views. And my audience didn't change all that much. I must have gained like maybe 1,000 followers, 1,500 followers. So at that point I was like, well, I'm not gonna continue doing this. Not only do I not get fulfillment out of it, uh, this moving carrot is not something I'm interested in continuing to do. I will say I feel very lucky to have that month that I got, you know, pretty lucky to make basically what felt like free money, but it still didn't feel fulfilling. Uh, it's, I, I think it's really interesting to think about the fact that six months of ad revenue from YouTube was less than that one reel from Instagram. So anyways, that's being paid for reels and that's kind of my, I don't know, inner thoughts about reels in general, but that's why you see them all over your feed. They're everywhere, that's all they're promoting. People are even going to just putting their photos in a reel so that you still see them to some music or something like that. Uh, they're also, I, I've noticed that I'm opening Instagram now and the first post I see is sponsored. And I'm like, I, okay. I'm also noticing that I'm opening Instagram and it's showing me suggested posts, kind of like what Twitter does, which if you're unfamiliar, it'll show you a post that's not sponsored, but it's just from someone that you follow that liked them or someone that you follow to based off of what you might be interested in. So my feed is filled with reels that I don't really wanna see, sponsored posts, and barely anything from anyone I actually follow or care about. Now you can spend the time to train your algorithm to try to show you stuff that you're actually interested in or show you less of the things I'm talking about. But the reality is from all of the colleagues that I've talked to, all of the forum posts that I've read, uh, and just the general things of reading on like Reddit and stuff like that, I'm just noticing that a lot of photographers are like, hey, none of my photos are getting seen. They're just not doing well. They're not, the space, there's too much congestion in the space. Uh, and that's it. Like, I, I actually think this is the point where Instagram is now not the photo platform that it once was. So I don't really know what to do in terms of recommendations. A lot of people have moved to Twitter, but I don't necessarily know if that's any better than Instagram. The images are way higher quality. You don't have to conform to a particular aspect ratio. But again, the entire problem is that all the photographers are moving to Twitter, not all of the people. And the whole benefit of Instagram was that we could get our work in front of everyone. It wasn't just <laughs> photographers. And I think that that's where the big caveat is, is that as much as I dislike Instagram and as much as I think it's bad for displaying my art in the purest form of what I want to display it as. I recognize its value as a business aspect. And I don't really know what's next, but I do know that I think this is the end of that golden era of Instagram and becoming an influencer or becoming a photographer via just gaining a following on one platform. I have other friends that rely a lot on the income that they make through their following on Instagram and it's gone. It, it, it's not there anymore. And it's really scary to think that that is a possibility. 
And it's why it's always important to diversify how you connect with people or how you make profit or how you get your work out there. But in the world where it's so important to focus on one particular platform, in this case, Instagram, what happens when it goes away? I'm not entirely sure. I would love to know what you guys think in the comments. If you have any suggestions for what's going to be next, if you liked the video, you could like it. If you loved it, consider subscribing. I'll see you again next week. Peace. What are you doing? Hi. You want to come say hello?